today we're going to talk about you but not you the tv show you Hey friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can see from the title of this video, we're going to make food loosely inspired by the TV show You. Now, this idea actually came to me after having watched a lot of Minarome YouTube videos. If you don't know who Minarome is, she's this awesome YouTube content creator who does a lot of vegan food recipes. And one of the things that she does on her channel from time to time is to to make different videos inspired by fandoms and movies and TV shows and I thought that's quite genius, that's quite fun and I want to do it myself. So I kind of started brainstorming what could I do, maybe I should start this concept out with a k-drama, maybe I should start with some anime, maybe I should do Studio Ghibli movies. Now my roommate really enjoys to watch a lot of movies and TV shows and so when we moved in together she was in the middle of of watching you. Now I never really thought that I would be the kind of type to watch you as it always seemed a little bit weird to my taste but I just sat randomly beside her she turned on the TV and that's how I ended up watching you. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good or bad decision but you know it is what it is. So here we are, we're making foods inspired by you. I had such a hard time choosing, but I ended up with five recipes. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the recipes. A quick disclaimer. While this video won't contain any major spoilers, I will mention some specific scenes and make some references, which by the way will be way funnier if you've actually watched the show. Also, if you haven't watched Gossip Girl yet, then please do so before watching you, as your view on Dan Humphrey will never ever be the same again. So consider yourself warned and without further ado, let's just jump right into it. The first creation that we'll be making today is a celery juice, or at least something that resembles it, inspired by the scene where Joe has to do some soul searching, and apparently celery juice acts as part of the solution. Ew. Dude, I love green juice, but celery is basically Satan's butt plug. To be honest, I only made this because our household had some leftover celery, so I decided to grant myself some creative freedom, and with that I mean a lot of freedom. In a blender, we're going to add some oat milk. Recently, I've really been loving the barista version from Oatly, so if you can get your hands on that, I definitely do recommend it. To that, we're going to add one stalk of chopped celery, because we don't want to overdo it, followed by some frozen mango and kiwi, as well as some vegan vanilla protein powder. So far, I still haven't managed to find a vegan protein powder that isn't super grainy, so if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comment section down below. Anyways, blend all of that up until you reach the desired consistency. I definitely did have to add some more milk and water and then I decided to add some spinach as well because I was afraid that I wasn't going to get a green color and at least I wanted to stay true to the color itself. Like, that shouldn't be that hard. Anyways, I decided to give it all a taste test as I haven't really made any smoothie or juice with celery in it before and I must say that I was pleasantly surprised. It's not that bad. And then again, the celery ratio wasn't that high to begin with, but you know, that's a minor detail. Now pour this all up in your favorite smoothie glass, add a fancy straw, and you're ready to enjoy this spiced up version of a celery juice. Which basically ended up turning into a green smoothie, but you know, it is what it is. Hey, wow, it smells amazing in here. Remember the part where I said that the food was only loosely inspired by the show? Well, dish number two definitely lives up to that. The next dish is inspired by the scene where Love was preparing food for Joe while Joe was coming up with disturbing ways to dispose of a human body. My roomie said that I could do something inspired by minced meat, so I decided to create a cruelty-free and no-killing included vegan chili scene carne. 
The first thing you need to do is to prepare some rice. Next, we're going to chop some onion and garlic as well as a leek and some celery. And yes, the celery does belong to the before shield bunch of celery and it was slowly dying but I was trying my very best to use it up. Also, my brother really hated me for adding celery to this dish, so leave that out or blend it very finely if you're making this for a picky eater. To a big potter pan, add some olive oil. A little tip for me would be to use some oil that comes from a jar of sun-dried tomatoes. This not only adds some more flavor to the dish, but it also helps you save money on oil and you kind of avoid food waste. Next, you're going to fry up your chopped ingredients until they're all soft and translucent and then it's time to add some spices. Now, what spices I use always change from time to time, but I'm not really the type of person who enjoys really spicy food, so I'm not using a fresh chili here. If you like it spicy, then go ahead and add that as well as your favorite spices. Cinnamon, however, is a must for me. Next, you're going to add some corn as well as some kind of vegan minced substitute. Now keep stirring until it's kind of brown or when you think that it's well prepared. I also decided to do a taste test and add more seasoning, so you can feel free to do that as you make the dish to make sure that it tastes just how you want it to taste. Next, we're adding in some tomato paste, some kidney beans, as well as some tomato puree. At this point, you want it to simmer for around 20 to 30 minutes to let the flavor develop. If it gets too thick, you can always add a little water. The next part is totally optional, but I just like to add a little bit of vinegar as well as some really dark chocolate to add some sweetness and some bitterness to the dish. Give it all one last taste test and you're ready to plate the dish. As the portion that I was plating was for my brother, I ended up changing it over and over again since he kept saying what he wanted and didn't want on top of his chili. If you ask me, some nice sides and toppings could consist of rice, some nachos, some sour cream, a little bit of avocado or even some guacamole, maybe some shredded cheese and some fresh tomatoes and, you know, a little bit of lime. But you know what, you can keep it as simple or as vibrant as you want to. I mean, Joe won't be there to judge and kill you. And this concludes my innocent and no killing included chili sinkane. Now tell me what you want. I'm craving french fries. The next two recipes come as a package deal as they are inspired by the scene where Candace finally got to confront Joe. So we're making homemade french fries and milkshakes. For the fries, we're starting out by rinsing and washing some potatoes. Next, we're going to cut them into smaller sticks. Because this recipe is so simple, I really wanted to go all in in order to get the most crisp oven baked fries. Apparently, the secret is to leave them in a bowl of water followed by a little bit of vinegar for half an hour as this is supposed to remove much of the starch from the potatoes. I was very skeptical, but I decided to do it anyways. After the fries have had time to sit in the water mixture, you're going to drain and rinse them. Pat them with some paper towel to remove as much liquid as possible and lastly you're going to add them all in a bag. Now we're adding some oil and all of our favorite seasonings. As I wanted to serve these alongside some milkshake, I kept them very neutral by seasoning them with some salt and pepper. Give the fries a good shake and put the sticks onto a baking sheet or an oven proof dish. Put these into a preheated oven at about 180 degrees and bake them for around 20 to 35 minutes or maybe even more depending on your oven. The first time I made these I managed to burn them as I haven't really made french fries for god knows how long. But the second time around, I really think I nailed it. I must say that these ended up tasting quite fine, even though I'm more of a potato wedge type of person. Also, I'm not really sure if the vinegar water thing did any difference, but let's just pretend that it did. To go with the fries, we're making a very simple and somewhat healthy banana vanilla milkshake. Add some frozen banana and some somewhat frozen pear chunks into a blender, as well as some vanilla sugar and some oat milk. Now blend it all together and add some more milk until you reach the desired consistency. This milkshake was so simple to make, but it ended up tasting way better than I had imagined. And I even think that it's my favorite recipe for this whole video. Also, this milkshake made me super nostalgic 
nostalgic as my mom always used to make this for me and my brother when we were kids. So I also had to let my brother do a taste test and he approved. So now that I finished making the fries and the smoothie, I still need to try out one thing that I've never done before and um, if you've seen the scene with Candace, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> really sure what I think about it. I think that a slush ice would have been better or you know those soft ice. Fries with soft ice I think that um, that would have been better but homemade a milkshake. Mm -hmm. For the last recipe, I found my inspiration from Love's Cinnamon Rolls. Since she added a little twist to hers, I thought that I could do the same, so I decided to make a somewhat healthier filling based on dates. These ended up being vegan as well, and I honestly can't believe how impressive they actually ended up looking, so let me just show you how to make them yourself. In a small bowl, add some oat milk and warm it up using a microwave or a smaller saucepan. The milk only needs to be lukewarm, as it will kill the yeast if it gets too hot. Now crumble the fresh yeast into the milk and let it sit for a while until the yeast has dissolved. In the meanwhile, you can take care of the dry ingredients. Go ahead and add half of the all-purpose flour as well as some white whole wheat flour if you have that available. It's a kind of flour that has a darker color and the same nutritional value as oats, which is quite nice as it makes the cinnamon rolls more filling. If you don't have that, you can go ahead and use some regular flour. You might just need to use a little bit more. Then you're also going to add some sugar and some salt. When the yeast has dissolved, add the mixture to your mixer as well as the dry ingredients. I also forgot to add some butter, so I did that later on, which worked quite fine. If you're going to need the dough with your hands, I would recommend melting the butter as it makes it easier to mix it all together. Anyways, let the mixer or your hands do the rest of the job for you while you slowly add the remaining flour a little bit at a time so that you can always remain in control of the consistency. Let your mixer or your hands knead the dough for about 20 minutes or until you get tired. You want the dough to be soft and easy to work with, but not dry. Anyways, put a dish towel over the bowl and let it all rise for an hour. In the meanwhile, you can go ahead and prepare a date filling. For this, you'll need some very juicy dates and here you're just going to pour over some hot water and let that sit for a couple of minutes just to be sure that the dates are soft and easy to work with. Drain the dates and add them to a food processor as well as a very brown banana. Like, I don't even know how it managed to get this brown, but you know, the content itself was fine. Other than that, you're going to add some cinnamon and some vanilla sugar. As I tasted the filling, I wanted it to be a little bit more sweet, so I also added some brown sugar to the mixture as well. Lastly, I blended in some vegan butter and that was basically it for the filling. Now it's time to roll the dough out. Sprinkle some flour on the tabletop and flour the rolling pin. You want to roll the dough into a long rectangle and I recently found a super useful hack on TikTok as to how to do just that. Find your sharpest knife and flour that as well. Now you're going to cut a cross into the dough as shown in the video. This will make it easier to shape it out as a rectangle instead of having it end up in a weird circle. The dough should be around half a centimeter thick. Now you're just going to spread the filling out as evenly as possible. You want to leave an edge on the longer end of the dough without the filling or else you'll have trouble making the dough stick to itself when you roll it out later on. Roll the dough as tightly as you can without the filling going in all kinds of directions. When you reach the part of the dough with no filling, you can go ahead and wet that part with some water as that will make it easier for the dough to stick to itself. 
Now it's time to cut the big roll into smaller rolls and here again I have yet another hack for you. So for this you're going to need some sewing thread. Take a smaller piece of thread and bring it under the roll. Next you're going to pretend that you're trying to tie your shoelaces but instead you're just going to cut the deal with thread. I don't really know how to describe this technique, but that's the advantage of having a YouTube channel. I can just show you. You might also want to change the thread halfway through the process, as it can get a little sticky from the filling, but just try it out and see how it works for you. I find that this is the best technique for cutting cinnamon rolls, as the filling remains in the rolls and you don't have to squash them the same way you would if you used a knife. I ended up with about 16 cinnamon rolls and then I just transferred them into an oven proof baking tray. By doing this the cinnamon rolls also won't get as dry when baking them and the filling will stay inside which is quite nice. Cover these with a dish towel again and let them rise for about 20 minutes. When ready, bake the cinnamon rolls in a preheated oven for about 15 to 17 minutes. You'll want to check after 10 minutes since all ovens are different. If you want to, you can also go ahead and brush your cinnamon rolls with this glaze that I came up with. This just consists of some oat milk and a teaspoon of honey, all of which I decided to melt in the microwave. It's going to add a nice color to the cinnamon rolls and they are just going to look more shiny and be more tasty, but you can totally leave this step out. The last optional element to these cinnamon rolls is the frosting. Here I just decided to mix some cream cheese, a little bit of vanilla sugar and some maple syrup. And then I just mixed it all up until I reached the desired consistency and until I was satisfied with the taste. And this, my friends, is the final result. These turned out so soft and fluffy and the cinnamon smell in the kitchen was amazing. Also, the filling was surprisingly nice. It's not as sweet as the sugar-based version, but I quite enjoyed the natural and subtle sweetness of the dates. This also allowed us to enjoy them as a breakfast treat the day after, which I highly recommend trying out as well. And this, my friends, concludes this video. If you made it so far, I hope that you found this video entertaining and that it was able to inspire you a little. If you decide to recreate any of the dishes, please let me know here or tag me over on Instagram. Also, I found that this fandom slash movie inspired food was quite fun to make, so I'm considering doing it again. If you have any suggestions or if you want to see a part two inspired by the first season of you, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, take care, stay safe, and be brilliant. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.